is a lot faster actually. I don't know why they don't advertise that. It's like a secret speed mode that they just don't want people to know about for some reason. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I got another electric skateboard review for us today and I can almost guarantee that this one is gonna be far, far better than the last one that I did. I'm shooting for less talking, more riding and testing this time, so without further ado, today we're taking a look at the Cool Wheel Gen 2. This is how the board ships out of the box. It comes with a nice padded bag, fits the board perfectly. It has two little straps here so you could actually wear this thing like a backpack and it's nice for traveling with something like this because as you know, after you ride these boards for a while, they can get very, very dirty. So this will keep the dirt off the inside of your car or wherever you're going with it. They've also included two different grip tapes, it looks like. A little bit of a customization options here. Got a pretty cool city skyline type of look. And then this one is probably my favorite. It's almost like a galaxy type of theme. The grip that's on it right now is just pretty plain and simple. Black grip with the gold Cool Wheel logo on it. So I think in the future I'll probably swap it out for this. Before we go over the actual specs, they also included some other stuff in the box. Two replacement wheels, which will go over the back hub motors on this thing. These wheels are massive, by the way, huge. And then inside the box, they include a charger, charger cable for the remote and the battery, as well as a T-tool. The remote on this thing is kind of funky compared to all of the other boards that I've done in the past. There's no lanyard, it's just this like fitness band type of thing. It's like a little bit rubbery. A switch, button, controller, couple of lights, and a charging port on the side. Now it's time for the spec rundown. The second generation Cool Wheel has dual brushless hub motors and they are massive. I'm hoping their impressive size actually matches their performance. Those motors are wrapped in a 97 millimeter wheel which should be pretty good for cracks and bumps. The board is powered by a 5500 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. It has a charge time of about two hours and a big plus is that they're actually swappable. They include a DC port charger adapter in the box that way you can actually charge any extra batteries that you have outside of the board. The combination of the battery and the 350 watt dual motors should give you a speed up to about 24.5 miles per hour and give you a distance of about 10 to 16 miles. That's obviously a really broad range and it depends on the rider's weight and ability. The board is packed with what they call their smart chip technology which will avoid sudden acceleration and braking. It also has real time monitoring of the motor temperature which should protect them intelligently if you're going up a hill and just putting too much stress on the motors. And then there's the price. You can pick up the board, controller, accessories, and everything that you saw here for $649 right now on Amazon. All right, so $650 for this whole package. That doesn't seem too bad in my opinion. I really have to test it out before I know if it's gonna be worth it or not though. One thing that I can tell you that I already like is that when you set the board on the ground, you can put your foot on the back of the tail and then slowly drop the board to the ground. You can do this with boosted boards, but there are some other boards like my Evolve Bamboo GTX that you can't do that. It just makes life a lot easier when you're cruising around town. Kick the board up, walk into whatever shop that you're going into. So the deck itself is a lot smaller than the Evolve. It's smaller than the boosted board. The wheelbase is also a little more narrow. And standing on the board, it's definitely a lot stiffer than the boosted board. I think that's gonna be the main competitor of this thing. So it's stiff, narrow wheelbase. However, I do like that it is a wooden deck. I'm not a big fan of the plastic decks, especially like the last one that I just tested. That board was a nightmare. Power this thing on with the button on the side right here. Triple tap on the remote, vibrates a little bit, and we're all charged up and good to go. In the instructions that came with this board, they really don't talk about how you control the different functions and modes on this thing. I found out some stuff by watching videos and reading online, so I'll get to that in a second. So to start off, this is the mode that the board comes in, the only mode that they even really tell you about in their documentation and on their website. Let's see how it goes. That this thing is smooth. This is like a dream compared to that last Chinese board that I did. Let's see how the brakes work real quick. 
Oh man, that's what I love to see out of electric boards like this. Been on the board for not even 30 seconds and I already feel pretty confident with it. The acceleration curve is smooth, the braking is smooth. Very similar to the characteristics of the boosted board. I'm speaking about the Gen 1 of course, I don't have a Gen 2 boosted board yet. I am tracking this test on my phone so I'm just gonna keep on going and I'll check back in a couple miles. Man, this thing is really surprising me. It's super stable, nice and smooth acceleration curve and everything. And as you can probably tell, it is super quiet. Hub motors are inherently more quiet than belt driven motors, obviously. But I'm like maxed out on this thing right now and people can't even hear me coming from behind them. I appreciate the stealth factor of this board. Now it's time to see if this thing will break with the brick test. This is also the only somewhat hill in South Beach, Miami, so let's see how it does. the hill just fine and with these big wheels I thought it would be a little bit smoother but sort of rattling the hell out of my feet right now. All right here for the first 3.38 mile check-in. Check out how blue the water is today by the way. I'll start with a controller first because I was a little bit skeptical of this thing just because it's so different from anything else that I've used before. I have to say though, it is pretty nice. It has this like soft touch feel to it. All of the controls are good. I haven't even used a reverse function yet. I could do without that, but it's there. I do have pretty large hands, so this thing kind of takes up my whole palm, but I'm just riding with my thumb right on top of it and it's pretty confidence inspiring and that's always what I look for in a controller. Hang on a second, this guy has to walk past blaring music. Thank you. All right, now for the board itself. I really don't have anything bad to say about this thing yet. The deck is pretty stiff. That could be a pro or con depending on how you look at it. The wheels are nice and big and they're pretty hard. So that's, I think, why the bricks were a little bit rough on my feet. But cruising around on freshly paved streets and even sidewalk, this thing feels pretty damn good. It does sit fairly high off of the ground compared to some of the other boards that I've tested in the past. And a combination of that and the narrow wheelbase on this thing does make carving feel a little less desirable as compared to some other boards. This thing doesn't have nearly the turning radius as the double kingpin trucks on the Evolve Bamboo GTX, but this is in a completely different price point, so these trucks do just well for 650 bucks. I can't tell exactly what bearings they're using in this board, however, the wheels do spin pretty well, and especially because this thing is a hub motor, you can push this freewheel a lot easier than any belt-driven board out there. Hopefully, I won't have to do that. I haven't heard any battery issues or anything yet. Nothing's beeping at me or screaming, so I'm gonna hop back on this thing and ride it until I hear some signs of failure. Alright, I just had one vibrate out of the controller. I don't know what that means, but I'm probably only at like five miles now. That does make me remember something though. They don't really advertise speed modes on this thing. However, I heard if you give five button presses on the on switch here, it supposedly goes into the fast mode. So far the recorded top speed was like 15 and a half miles an hour, which is great cruising speed, no problem with that at all. However, if you're gonna be riding in traffic like I often do, I gotta see if this top speed mode works. 
One, two, three, four, five. All right, we just saw it flash red there, and now it should be faster. Their top speed said 24 and a half, so we'll see about that. Still smooth acceleration, but this is definitely faster now. This is a lot faster, actually. Brakes are strong, they feel good. I don't know why they don't advertise that. It's like a secret speed mode that they just don't want people to know about for some reason. I'm gonna race this Maserati next to me. All right, the Maserati's a little faster. Even with this faster speed mode, it's still really comfortable to ride. I mean, in and out of traffic, no problem at all. As long as you're used to how the board carves, getting used to the feel of the controller comes super easy. And this is definitely a good board for someone who's getting into the electric skateboard game. Because of how smooth it is, I could definitely put anyone on here who's never ridden one before, and I would feel pretty confident that they would pick it up really easily. Let's go for a top speed run here. I don't know if that felt like 24, 25 miles an hour, but I mean, it's pretty quick for what I need. What's up, man? Have you ever ridden an electric skateboard before? No, uh, never. Do you want to try it? Sure. All right, I just ran into David. I saw him, he had a long board, and I figured why not let someone try an electric board who hasn't used one before. So it's a controller, you push up to go, and then you pull back to brake. Okay. It's got some juice. Yeah, yeah. It's got some juice, man. It's got more than I thought. Yeah, it, it really is smooth. Nice gradual thing and keep a nice pace. It's, it's controllable, it's fun. Oh, this is this is so easy. I know. <laughs> we can cruise up the beach if you want. Yeah. It. Real people riding these boards for their first time, just like I thought. He picked it up really easily, and it's a good board. His reaction is super genuine. It might have seemed like I paid him to say that, but I don't even get paid to make these videos. Cool Wheel set this out to me for review, and it's a good board, man. I'm gonna try to keep cruising around the beach and ride this thing until it dies, and then I'll head back to my apartment and give you guys my final thoughts. Keep in mind, this is only my very first impression of this board. However, I think this might be giving Boosted a run for their money. I just got another controller vibrate. It looks like we're blinking on red there on the first light. I'm assuming that means that the board is going to die soon, but the power still feels like it's there. So I'm just gonna kind of do laps close to home and see if it actually goes completely dead now. All right, back for final thoughts. Right after I recorded that last clip, the controller started vibrating like crazy and then the board slowly started losing power. I made it around the block one more time and then it really started to decline. The controller was constantly vibrating and the throttle wouldn't work, however the brakes did work so that's probably an added safety feature. In case you're going down a hill or something like that, you still have power to the brakes. I'm actually gonna throw this thing on the charger quick because, surprise, surprise, I actually really enjoyed riding this board. I will probably end up taking this thing out later today and uh, testing it even more. So let's look at the stats real quick. Covered a final distance of 8.33 miles, total runtime of almost an hour, max speed of 22 miles per hour, and an average moving speed of 10 miles per hour. So that's including all the stop and go there. I would say average moving speed was probably more like 15 miles per hour. So the range didn't meet their lowest advertised range. However, I'm about 170 pounds. I rode this thing almost full speed everywhere I was going, depending on which mode I was in. And eight miles of cruising like that, that's pretty damn good. That's more range than my 
Gen 1 boosted board. Another good thing is that you can hot swap the batteries. So if you have an extra one of these in a backpack, you simply pull a pin that's underneath here, pull the battery out, slap a new one in, and then you got what, 16 miles or even more if you're lighter than I am. I really can't think of anything bad to say about this board. Everything that I've said so far has been pros and I really can't think of any cons. Keep in mind though, this is my first impression of this board. Typically when I test boards, I end up riding them. This one I'm definitely gonna throw into my rotation of boards to get around here. So I'm gonna be riding this thing a lot more and then somewhere down the line, maybe I'll find a con, something might fail on it, but we'll see how it goes in the future. I've actually ran into some troubleshooting situations with some of the other boards that I have reviewed in the past. So after about a month or so, if you guys are still enjoying these videos, maybe I'll do like a 20, 30 minute video, a complete update of all of the electric skateboards that I've been accumulating over the past couple of weeks and months. So big thanks to Cool Wheel for letting me check out the Gen 2 board. If you guys wanna pick up one for yourself, you can buy this on Amazon, which doesn't get any easier than that. About 650 prime straight to your door. And although this is my first impression, first look at this board, I think I would recommend it to pretty much anyone out there who's looking to get into the e-board market. So that's gonna be all for today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. That's gonna be all for today, so as always, Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.